My name is Janie Shepatel and I'm the project leader for inclusive economies at the IJR. It's my job to give IJR a voice on matters of inclusive development and peace, which means that my research aims to identify the drivers of conflict systems that are rooted in material causes and then also inclusive solutions that can help build sustainable peace. I also lend my other projects to deepen their analysis of inclusive development. Inclusive Economies has been doing a series of four publications that aims to find the relationship or understand better the relationship between human development and peace in different African countries. The most recent of these papers was focused on South Africa. Our theory of change postulates that human development can reinforce state strength, or in other words, reduce state weakness through capacitating societies and ultimately fostering vertical trust that can reinforce the social contract and increase incomes for society. Um, and then on a micro or an individual level, we postulate that human development works to increase the opportunity cost of entering into a conflict, especially where the individual has more to give up, not only in terms of income, but also in terms of education, healthcare, life expectancy, and other components of human development. And so after sort of fleshing that out and understanding this relationship on a theoretical level, we identified four countries where we wanted to provide evidence-based insights into how transitional or fragile societies can use human development to embed the foundations of peace into both the state and society. Our key finding across all four publications was that human development deficits do indeed underpin conflict systems. Most recently, we published a paper on South Africa, and we found that after almost three decades of democracy, South Africans still find themselves in increasingly precarious material situations. Presently, unemployment is higher than ever before and threatens to push many in the middle class into poverty. Simultaneously, increasing poverty and inequality continue to put strain on the well-being of the population, while also eroding trust between people and also between society and the state. So that's both horizontal and vertical trust. Some of the suggestions or recommendations that we make um, off the back of our research is that the government should prioritize the creation of a professional and independent civil service as a means to insulate the state from the whims of party politics. This is critical for continuity in the delivering of services to citizens and also to improve the predictability that is required for domestic and international investment. We also suggest that the state, the state strengthen its anticipatory capacity amid growing global complexity and uncertainty. And this can take the form of a dedicated strategic foresight unit within a department like the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, for example. Um, this would be a unit that then looks to employ futures methodology, such as scenarios to guide long term planning towards the achievement of key human development goals. And finally, we suggest that government prioritize expenditure that creates agency at the community level. And this involves shifting the supply of human agency from central state led programs to adaptive and innovative community led programs. These can often be more cost efficient and easier to manage and monitor, while also creating space for innovative solutions that are also too risky to pilot at a national scale. These publications provide evidence based insights and pragmatic recommendations that can be that must be considered rather by key policymakers and other decision makers. It's also our hope that each publication was part of a growing body of knowledge that can be useful to global organizations, think tanks, researchers, practitioners, um, the business community, community leaders and civil society more broadly. And here we cannot understate the important role of the media to play in sharing some of our key insights. I would say a key takeaway is that we as a society come together to ensure that we don't let any further sort of erosions of vertical and horizontal trust take root in our society. It's really important that we learn to mediate and trust each other so that we can build a mutually reinforced cooperative society and one where the basic proponents of peace are embedded into society.